All right, it's finally here, guys. We've all been waiting for uh, the next installment of damage from Heavy Our City, so let's have a look at it. So today we're going to be sifting through uh, damage to from Heavy Our City. Uh, but hey, if we haven't met yet, my name is Tom Wood, and I run this channel called Sifter Studios. And on here, you'll find media composing tutorials, Cubase tips and tricks, and freelance lifestyle talks from time to time. So if that sounds interesting, make sure to subscribe. So the original damage from Heavy Our City, uh, I think it came out in 2011. It's been like one of the go-to libraries for a really mangled, percussion sounds and effects and I've been using it a lot myself it comes bundled with the complete ultimate from native instruments so that's how I got it and now I've upgraded so if we have a look at the old one uh, we have a lot of different presets we can open up in damage 2 you'll find all the presets inside of these three main categories instead. So we're going to have a look at all three and hopefully I'll be able to show you some tips and tricks that I've read about in the manual. So let's put on these so that I can actually hear something as well. Let's start out with uh, the ensemble designer and as you can see it's a beautiful interface and it has four main screens stage source settings and master effects um, to choose the different presets uh, you go up here and you'll find everything here if you want to have a listen to all of the sounds I think heaviosity has their own YouTube uh, video just doing that playing through all of the presets, uh, but I'll give you a little peek right there. So within the ensemble designer, you kind of have two different main categories. You have all the genres like organic and Tycos and ethnic, obviously, but you have performance presets and menu presets. So the menu presets uh, will have a lot of different instruments within the, the keys that you can play and the performance ones will have more like one, one instrument and different articulations. So I can give you a, a, an example of that. Darbukus and Tombak clacks. So all of these are uh, Darbukas with, <laughs> I'm not sure how you, I would say that and tombacks, right? Like like the title says. However, if we go to a menu, ethnic palette, we'll see if you if you have a look at the name right here. That you go through different kinds of instruments. And here there would be like single single hits. Uh, whereas in the performance presets, you'll have rolls, swells, and, and flams, and, and that, that kind of stuff. So, just wanted to get that out of the way uh, first. So, the performance uh, presets or snapshots uh, consist of up to three different instruments, uh, and they will be mapped out uh, octave by octave. And they will also be laid out in like a similar fashion so that you can just change an octave and get another source. Um, we'll, we'll show all this in detail. You can also have a look at how many sources are in each snapshot if you have a look at the number in parentheses at the end. Now the kit designer is in that kind of new way of presenting the different sources uh, with damage and uh, it's laid out to work great with uh, Native Instruments Machine uh, DAW. It also maps out uh, so that it works with like MPC uh, hard hardware or MPC MIDI controllers. Um, I left mine at the studio so I can't I can't show you but um, I'll show a picture of it instead. And finally, the loop designer is loops uh, spread out over four octaves. So you have a low, mid, high, and at the bottom you have combinations of all three. So it's very similar to Native Instruments action strings or action strikes uh, in that way. And similar to the original damage as well. All of the loops are organized into straight or uh, triplet patterns, and we can have a short listen. 
Okay. Okay. Triplet sounds like this. Let's jump back into the Ensemble Designer and talk a little bit about uh, features. We've got a lot of different buttons here and I'm gonna take you through all of them. Uh, visually, you can kind of see a lot of different circles and like a square. This is representing a stage. And so you can uh, move the different sounds in the sound stage uh, to move them to the left, to the right, to the front or to the back. You can move all of them by moving over here, moving everything back, or you can move everything to the front, and that's going to sound a bit like. So this is this is the normal. So this is very similar to the simple version of Spitfire's uh, mag positions. You can move everything front to back and that will fade between the different mic positions. You can do this uh, by yourself. Uh, looking at the mix, you can turn down, or close the room and the hall, or just have the hall. Right, or you can just have the close mics. So you can get fancy with it. And that's on an instrument wide level uh, when this mix button is lighting up. If we move that over to drum, uh, the buttons are gonna change and we can do all kinds of different stuff individually. So to this drum, we can move it so I can move these. This is on a bank wide level. So you can see all of these, all of these are within the same octave at bank one, but you have three banks, three octaves. So if I move to the next octave, all of these will disappear and we're back to kind of square one. So I can move all of the, those to the back if I, if I want to. So, Octave one. So if I play something on both octaves using two hands. <laughs> you get the picture. You can you can kind of mix them uh, on a sound stage level near to far as well as left to right normal panning. Uh, let's say we're in bank one and I'll, I just want to change uh, the positions of everything. We have some nifty key commands. If you alt click on a Windows machine or option click on a Mac, then you'll actually randomize everything in that bank. And so you can come up with new positions. And to reset one of these sources, I just control click or command click on them and they'll reset to the middle. If you uh, control alt or command option click one of the sources and holding alt or option and moving them will actually move them together. And uh, if you move them towards the nearest point or the farthest point, you can actually kind of create somewhat of a line out of them and then place it wherever you want. Uh, you can do the same with the left and right if you want to narrow it down a little bit and place it kind of off to the off to the side. Like you can do something like that. Now to just turn off this uh, placement function uh, in its entirety, just turn off stage. Now looking at the drum versus the mix, uh, buttons. If I'm at the drum, I can change the volume of this drum. 
I can change the tuning of it so I can go down uh, 24 and go up 24. And I can, this is, this is like a simple EQ, so I can add low end. All right. Or I could add more top, pull it away. If I want the attack to be a little later, uh, or to pull, pull out some of the attack and the transient, I can do that with the attack. And I can shorten down the decay if I want to. This guy, follow MIDI, just simply means that the stuff on screen will update um, after I press a new key. That's helpful when you're building the instrument and it's not helpful at all when you have lots of different layers uh, playing from a MIDI region uh, during playback. So then it's nice to turn it off uh, and it's gonna be super easy to spot in all of these three designers. Now let's have a look at the source screen. Three like main columns, you have category, and then you have um, the where you select the sound and where you can drop the sound. This is super, super intuitive and will you'll, you'll be up and running in no time. So you can choose the category. Let's say we want Tycho's. We can listen to the Tycho's by, uh, by making sure that this guy is on. And if we set it to auto, it will auto play once we So as you can hear, it does not choke uh, the sample once you click a new one. And I would have loved it if that was the case. So maybe that will happen in a update because we uh, have the ability to do that in the instrument itself, as we'll see later. So when I'm going through and using, I want to, I don't want to spend time uh, waiting for the last sample to kind of end before I listen to the new one. And also if we're back on the drum single source um, menu, you can sort these further. So now I'm inside of a hybrid, I can then do damage hits or I could do sub hits. Or if I'm in ethnic, I could have only hand hits. So that would help me uh, to find the sounds that I want. The cool thing here is that I can say, I like this one, the mid taiko. I can choose which octave I would like to add that to. And you can see that reflecting down here. So let's say I wanted to change that for this guy. I'll just drag that over. And there you go. Now it has the stage setting turned on. That's why it's sounding different than this guy. If I went back to stage and turned off stage, it would sound similar. Also in the in the middle section here, I can uh, browse by banks instead of by single drums, single sources, so that I could say all tycos and then that would fill up the entire octave. That would sound something like this. Okay, so that will be helpful if I knew that I wanted Tycho's and then I wanted Ethnic, so I wanted Dolls as well for um, for the next octave. And for the final one, let's say we wanted something hybrid, just some hits. So we could find some hits for the last one and boom, I now have three octaves of new stuff that's loaded in. And that's hits, so it's not, not that playable, <laughs> but you get the picture. Okay, next screen, settings. Here you can do uh, some stuff that is gonna affect uh, the whole global instrument and some that is gonna be per drum control. <laughs> so uh, these guys are the same settings as you would have in the stage if you were at the jump button and these guys round robin velocity random these guys will be uh, different so 
Uh, round robin, you usually want that on to not have the machine gun effect for the samples. You can kind of hear the difference. Velocity random adds a random velocity. Now you can uh, set up a, a custom velocity curve that's going to be global for this instrument. If you want, uh, if you want to, that's going to be very individual. Uh, but if you, for example, have a a MIDI keyboard that's very sensitive, so you need to hit hard to to reach the higher velocity samples, then you can kind of just raise the can probably do it like this. So uh, you would have to hit really softly to get the lower, uh, lower dynamics, and then it would gravitate towards the harder hitting samples or vice versa. If you have like my keyboard over here, it's very little sensitive. <laughs> so I need to be careful to not hit it too hard. Now this feels a lot more real when I have a velocity curve like this. So this is an easy way to do that. Now, if you don't want the keys velocity to affect the velocity at all, but you want to control it via the mod wheel, for example, you can enable this button and no matter how hard or soft I'm playing the keys now is at the same velocity. So, but if I activate the mud wheel, I can control it that way. And the voice cancel, let's see if we can show the amount of voices. So right now we're hovering around like between 15 and 20. If I turn it off, Obviously, that's going to be a lot more. <laughs> so, uh, if you if you're experiencing uh, clicks and pops, and uh, then then that's something you can try to enable to cut down on the amount of voices. Now, this performance section is really really cool, and it's going to be really quick to be able to uh, shape this uh, into what you want it to be. Let's enable it. So right here, we are. Now using a repeat and it's as easy as that. I'm just turning it on and this is going to be on a drum level. So I can have the performance on, on one key and not on another. By default, when you have roll to repeat, the velocity is going to come from um, the mod wheel CC1. Okay. And I can now choose if I want 30 second notes. little machine gun here right there. I'm not sure how many round robins you have. And you could do you could do stuff like this. So you could say you set up a pattern of five in eighth notes and you can say I want to accent the first. Or I could say I want to accent the last out of those. So you have a pattern of five eighths okay and that's really easy to loop if you want to or you could have it as a like a one shot and if you want you can adjust the amount of accentuation that you want on a key level and that's only the repeats but I'll, I'll take you through the interface so if I want now I can copy this to the next key and paste it. So now I have and paste it here. Okay, let's loop both of those. And now let's uh, play them with like a dotted quarter note in between them.
works better with like some something more straight. So so now I did one eighth between uh, the two different sources, and if I pan those a little bit different, uh, then I would create start to create some room and some movement in this stereo field. So this is a very easy way to make these sound like you, you, what you need them to sound like. Say, say I, I'm happy with this pattern, but I want them to be the same for every uh, source in that bank. Then I just Alt or Option Paste. And now they're going to be the same. That's only the repeat uh, section, but that's maybe the coolest one. So maybe I should have saved that for last. <laughs> the other ones are rolls. I can choose the rate. Right. And I can add in some like mistakes. So that it doesn't sound uh, that robotic and some uh, randomness to the velocities. So some some hits are gonna be uh, stronger than others. I can say I want the roll velocity to be controlled by via velocity. So if I, if I hit the key quietly, softly, then that's gonna uh, affect the the roll dynamics, or I could do the more usual way that it's controlled via mod wheel, or you could do expression if you want to. If you have an expression pedal, or if you have a, a fader controlling expression. Flams. So the amount here uh, will be how strong will the, will the flam be compared to the main hit. So flam, that the F, F is how, <laughs> how strong is the F compared to the lamb? At least that's how I learned uh, why it's called the flam, flam. So let's turn the rate back so we can hear it very clearly. So at this point, they're identical. So if you're at 100, you get the, the softest note and the loudest note together. And the rate, you can... These... Uh, doesn't really sound at this tempo. It doesn't really sound like a uh, flam, but it sounds like two notes. So you, you can experiment with how how big can you make the the space between the two notes before it sounds like two notes. Swells. Okay, so you go up and you go down again. And you can do that for a short amount of time or the, the, the biggest is two bars. And the crescendos. And these are, are these controlled by, okay. So these are not synced up, which can be really cool. If you want to create a crescendo of 16th notes, you would kind of do the repeat one. And instead of a first accent, you could do a mod, which uh, means the mod wheel, and then you can program it in. If you want. So that's the settings uh, screen. <laughs> Let's move over to the master effects. Some of these uh, are gonna be the, the same or very similar in the different ones. So we're taking a little bit longer on the first one and then we're, we're gonna 
move quickly. Uh, so in the master effects section, you can do just that. You can have a look at the master uh, effects. So this is not going to be on a per key level, but uh, this is going to be globally. So the biggest, biggest knob is the punish knob. And you might say, well, that did something. I can hear what it did, but it didn't do that much. And that is because it's connected to this guy over here. And uh, at the moment, its setting is gently now. Um, we can move that over to hurt me plenty. And it's going to change its icon. And as you can see, it also changes beautifully. <laughs> Once you go to max. Okay, so... Let's have a look at this. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. And move that over to Nightmare and that's gonna take this to a whole new level once again. This is on a global level though, but it can be automated. And in the effect sections here, I can change the chain of effects. If I want the delay to also be punished, uh, or I, if I want the delay to not be punished, then I can uh, place it before and turn it on. If I click on this, I can edit the individual effects, turn them on or off. And that's pretty much it. Delays, modern or vintage, compressor, feedback or bus. Let's, let's listen to this. So I think the feedback uh, means that it's going to be a parallel compression that's going to be fed back into the original signal. Usually I see feedback more in uh, delays and effects than in a compressor. Standard EQ, three band EQ. Reverb, you can choose between a hall or a room or a plate. Beautiful. Saturation is probably not going to be as aggressive as the punish one. Spoke too soon. Cool. So that's the master effect section and that's global. Uh, that's going to be the same in all three instrument types. Let's have a look at the kit designer. Okay, so for the kit designer, we have 16 different slots, uh, just like an, on an MPC and we can adjust some settings right here in the main window. Uh, let's start at the mix uh, window, first of all. And uh, this ranges from C1 to D sharp 2. Uh, in this main view, you can see the eight first slots at one time, and you can change them to see the second uh, line of things. And you can pan them and change the volume. And can you you can also solo them, this guy. You can mute individual ones. Here you'll find the name of the sound you're playing. And per sound or hit or drum or whatever you want to call it, you can set up four individual effects that you can change and they are global. So I could have four EQs if I wanted to, not that that would make a lot of sense. But I could do that and these go in a in a chain from top to bottom. So in this example, we have an EQ first, then an overdrive, then a transient designer, then a compressor at the end. And if I click on the individual ones, I can change the settings right here. So you have compression, so you have compression, transient, uh, uh, 
transit manipulation or transit designer and EQ, a filter, which is like a low pass or high pass. Uh, you can overdrive it. Uh, modulator would be a phaser or a flanger. And you have a delay and a reverb. And I believe these are, yes, these are the same as the master effects ones, except you don't have a hole on the reverb one. And the other stuff you've seen, the MIDI follow is here and is handy to always know where it is. Uh, the stores looks very similar as well. Settings looks also very, very similar. One thing that you can do though is uh, change the sample start point. This is also going to be uh, a thing in the loop designer. But if I, let's, let's find the F. This guy, if I want to, I can start this later. If I don't want that much of an attack. I can do that. Cool. You could also do it here. And it will kind of do it automatically for you. Something to note. Here you also have the option to include round robins or not. And decide that you want to to choke the sound when you play another key. Which could be helpful if you're uh, trying to simulate like an open hi-hat and then a close hi-hat. That's where I usually find this future to be helpful. But if you're worried about low end buildup, for example, this could also be uh, something to check out. And again, the master effects section is identical. So that was quick. Uh, let's have a look at the loop designer. Okay, so for the loop designer, uh, this is going to be familiar from the original damage. If I just hit C1. You can see that the cursor moving and jumping a little bit uh, and is following the tempo of the door. So if I were to change that to say 120 and play it again, it will update. The loop designer is spread out over four octaves. So we have a uh, bank, one, two, and three, uh, in octave two, three, and four, and then in octave one, you have something called designer keys. So let's take a look at that. So in octave one, as default is going to play the first loop in all three banks. So it's laid out very easily in one octave is all of all of the combinations, then you have uh, the lows right here, and the mids right here, and the highs right here. And if you want to, you can you can choose uh, by yourself to play something. Or you could play something with uh, two mids and one high. So just without doing anything, you have a lot of uh, options ready for you just by playing. But the cool thing happens uh, when you can start to uh, experiment a little bit. So right here, I can select the different ones. So if I choose the, C, the C1, and then I can change these as I wish. So now the C1 is playing uh, a combination from the three banks that I just chose. Now you can do this, uh, you can set these to be completely random. So if I do this individually, they should all now be randomized. And I always like the ability to quickly change something to sound a little bit different than it's uh, originally sounding. So that could be an interesting thing. This part right here is uh, the stutter section. 
and uh, that's gonna chop up the sound so it's easier to do over here for the build-up sections in the trailer tracks that's how you do that or you could change those to triplets and that's going to change the subdivision to triplets instead of ah uh, what's the opposite of triplets you know what i mean now the source menu is going to be very very similar uh, we're going to do the same thing all over again again i wish that they would choke the different samples when moving to the next one that's probably uh, coming in an update hopefully however the send effects is a little bit different in this loop designer and this can be a little bit hard to wrap your head around uh, but the send section is instrument wide but the send amount is uh, per on a per loop basis so to explain that let's play this designer key let's say that we want to send very much from that and from the d chord we want to send nothing and now if we go to send effects we can affect the total modulation from every track that is sending something to the send effects Okay, so even even if I have sent a lot of information to the let's let's do just do a delay that's easier to hear. I've sent almost maximum to the send effects, but because of the effects modulation is at zero, we're not going to hear as much. But however, if I turn it up, I'm going to hear a lot on that loop, but on the other loop. I shouldn't be hearing as much. Let's go back to the loop. Okay, I figured it out. So my mistake was thinking that uh, the, this designer key had uh, its own separate settings. These settings that you see right here is not coming from the designer key, but it's coming from one of these. So probably the, yeah, this guy from bank two. So the first uh, loop uh, that selected in the bank. So if I instead, say that I want to affect this guy I want to send a lot from that track compared to this track okay so you can actually have if I just have it as dry as I can excuse me This is dry and this has a lot of send and I can affect how much in total is going to be sent to this chain with this button right here. And I can also modulate this if I want to and say that this is going to be 16 steps and it's going to look like this if I want to. Okay, this is uh, not sounding very good, but uh, you can change uh, the amount of steps if you want to. You can choose how it's going to be performed. So is it going to re-trigger? Start over again. Is it going to be legato so that if I... If I let go and hit, it's going to start over again. Or But if I hold down multiple keys, it's going to continue. Host would mean that it's going to start... Yeah, so it's going to follow the bars of the uh, of the door. Or one shot just means that it's going to go and then stop. Yep. Okay. Cool. You can also set the range. You can kind of choose where the maximum is going to be at. So this would be minimum, and this would be maximum right now. 
And if I did this, it, it would go from the absolute minimum to the absolute top. Smooth just means that it, in these jumps, it's going to do a gradual uh, transition between the two steps. The other send effects, if we have a look, they've categorized them into timbral and spatial. And so you have you have a tempo sync delay or a, a normal delay. Delay one, you have milliseconds. And for the tempo delay, you'll have different time divisions. We do a gator that's going to squash the sound according to the mod. Plate, hall, and reverb. And on the left, we have a compressor uh, lo-fi. Let's, let's listen to the lo-fi. So that's like a bit crusher. Yeah, that's a bit crusher. Dirty filter. Clean filter, a mod, like a phaser, and then a distortion. Okay, cool. And then finally we have the master effects section. So that's the three different instruments in the damage to interface. I want to show you quickly, let's just find a, let's go back to an ensemble designer. And I want to show you a little bit from the performance snapshots. Here we have low tacos and if we have a look at the settings, we have a normal normal hit. Normal hit. A flam. A repeat with four strokes and then an accent. And actually it's set to up right now. So if I only hold the key down for three uh, steps, then it will play the last uh, step as an accent. But usually like it's not gonna play any more than four hits anyway. And then we have a crescendo and then a roll that's controlled via the mod wheel. So the cool thing about this is that this is gonna repeat throughout the octaves. I can create a MIDI region. And if we stay in like 16th notes and start from C1, C2, I mean. Okay, now the cool thing about this is that if I want to just add an octave, it's following the same pattern, so now I can mute these guys. And these are organized in the same low, mid, high kind of pattern. And so it's very easy to just copy the pattern and say that I want some of these in the lower and I want a little bit more. So let's say I, I'll enable all those and then do something like this. So. Okay, and the, the also the nice thing about this, if I go back into the instrument, uh, these will carry over to other performance snapshots. So if I go to solo load Tycho's and load that and hit play. Uh, or if I'd say I want something more organic, all solo toms. Okay. That's very handy when you are programming and uh, coming up with different sections. And furthermore, if I have these uh, across different instruments, I can work a little bit with the stage 
of it and randomize everything by hitting Alt. So that's a uh, pretty thorough look at damage too. I, uh, I really love that I'm able to turn this into more of um, my own liking and uh, put my own uh, spin to it very easily and that's what I'm always looking for nowadays in uh, sample libraries or especially like looped libraries. I need to be able to sound like me and not like um, just loops from from a company uh, these everything that I've heard I, I think sounds amazing uh, and uh, it's been a blast to have a look at it and I can't wait to try it out in a more track setting I haven't uh, spent the time doing that for this video because I think there's 10 other videos doing that so I uh, instead had a thorough look at the manual and tried to learn this instrument as best as I could so hopefully uh, you've learned something and it's been of value to you. If it has, uh, why don't you hit the like button and, and subscribe if you want to watch more. And I'll be back with a new video very soon. But until then, remember that there's always gold in everyone.